welcome back to our fall broadcast. We're your hosts, Ranger Madison and Ranger Allie. We're in week three here in Shenandoah, and you'll be able to catch this broadcast every Thursday at 2 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and it'll also be on our website. Yep, every week we are going to go over tips for visiting. We'll share some fall photos that our rangers and you all have taken and posted on our Flickr site. We'll talk about that more later. And we also have a special guest at the end. Our peak check this week is we're still seeing a small amount of change, flashes of some red color with our mm -hmm. Virginia creeper and the dogwoods. Um, and we're still seeing some yellow with our goldenrod. And we're starting to see a little bit more yellow amongst these sort of smaller leaves here. You can see as you're looking at them compared to the darker green. The forecast this week is it is staying cold and getting colder at night, which is great for our fall color progression. Another way to track fall progression is to look at our webcams. You can see those links on our fall page and they'll link to the Big Meadows area as well as another webcam that we call Mountain View, which shows pinnacles and the valley below. If you're planning on hiking our most popular trails this season, either White Oak or Old Rag, it's a really good idea to do it during midweek. It gets super, super busy out there, particularly seeing the fall colors. And so if you get to do it midweek, we recommend that and get there early. Yeah. Also, if you already see that the trailhead is full, just move on to another one. There are 500 miles of trails. There's enough space for everyone to spread out. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. I can't tell you how many people we saw in the park this weekend. Mm -hmm. So that midweek hike is definitely what you need to do this fall. Something else we want to talk about is sharing the road. Despite Virginia's biking law changing, Shenandoah National Parks is still the same. So all cyclists must ride single file when they're on the drive. And please give enough space for those vehicles to pass you. They can cross back over into their lane when they do pass you. Here are some of your guys' photos from this week. We've been collecting them from our Flickr site, flickr.com slash group slash shenfall. If you'd like to be featured on next week's broadcast, go ahead and upload your photos. We'd love to see them. Yep, don't forget the location and date. That's super important because we want to give you all the credit you deserve. And happy one year anniversary to our Chronolog site at Pass Mountain Overlook. For the past 365 days, we have been collecting visitor photos and you can see that site if you go to our website under the photos and multimedia section and look for the citizen science time lapse. This week's special guest was Beth Prince from Matthews Arm Campground. Alyssa got to sit down and talk to her a little bit about camping in Shenandoah this fall and got some really good information about getting a campsite and having your past ready. Check it out. Le literally. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. because it stayed in a ball. It didn't, even, it didn't even scatter. It just went up and came back down. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm sitting here with Ranger Beth who works at Matthews Arm Campground and the fall season is really busy for the campgrounds in particular because everyone traveling to Shenandoah National Park are trying to get a campsite, which is so cool. It's such a great experience to have while you're here. So before you even get to your campground or your campsite, what are some of the tips that you have for entering the park? So one of the biggest things that I can recommend is purchasing a digital pass before you even get here. You can do that online on our website. Uh, you can get a seven day pass for either an individual if you're hiking or biking in, or you can get an auto pass as well. When you have that, it gets a lot easier to get into that entrance. Yeah, and all you have to do is take a screenshot or print it out, right? You got it. So it's a lot easier just to move on in when you have that ready to go. Yeah. And then when you get to the campground, and this goes for all the campgrounds, what do you have as recommendations for the visitors who already have a reservation and for those who are looking for a first come first serve site. The first thing I recommend is always, always, always stop in the ranger station. A lot of times people think they can go pick a site first and then come back. Unfortunately, if it's our last site and we've already sold it, that could be a problem. So if you have a reservation, we still would like for you to stop in, check with the ranger. We'll give you a little bit of direction, give you some maps. We'll take a little bit of information from you and get a little bit of information for you. Um, if you're looking for a campsite, come early on the weekends. The fall is our busiest season. 
Um, I would even maybe recommend calling ahead. You can call the campground stations. We can't hold anything for you, but we can definitely let you know what's available. What are some of the things that the campers should bring to their campsite? So one of the biggest things that people tend to forget is a shelter. Um, that's pretty important when you're camping, whether it be an RV or a tent, a hammock or a car. Another thing people tend to forget is it gets pretty chilly up here. It's always about 10 degrees cooler up here. So bring plenty of layers this time of year. Oh, the weather yeah. can change drastically. <laughs> so what are some of the questions you get asked pretty often by the campers? People always wanna know when the best time to come up here is. Fall is our busiest season. So I always recommend coming up during the weekdays. It's a lot quieter. Some of those overpopulated uh, trails tend to be a little bit calmer during the week. And firewood is a huge, huge question up here. So you can purchase firewood up here at our camp stores, but you can bring in um, USDA certified firewood as well. And then you can pick up anything dead and down on the ground. So Beth, what makes a happy camper? That's a really good question. My biggest thing I can say is listen to the rangers. Go to the ranger programs, ask tons of questions, and prepare like a ranger. What is your most memorable experience with a camper? The one that I tend to go back to the most, my very first season here, um, I had a little seven-year-old uh, child doing a child, junior ranger program. Um, we were just having a little chat. I was bent down, and he went to write something down, and he didn't have a pen. So, of course, I pulled out my pen for him to borrow, and the look in his eyes was amazing. He was so amazed and he said, a ranger is always prepared. So I've based my whole career on this seven-year-old child just making sure that I'm always prepared for whatever um, wow. this park brings to us. So you yeah. always have a pen. That's Absolutely. what the pen pockets for in our shirt. I always pen, you got it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's been really enjoyable and we've got Absolutely. a lot of great tips from you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for watching and we'll catch you again next week. Awesome. Okay. That was fantastic, you guys. <laughs> Great job.